And that's one of the biggest things that I learned is like, you know, you sit back and you try to plan, you try to anticipate what is it that people want to see? What is it that people want to hear? What content they want to see with this and that. And it's like, you spend so much time planning that while you just plan for these 10 days, somebody else has did something every day and tested and learned, tested and learned, tested and learned, right? We're back from It Starts Now to help you out with finance and business. My name is Stanley. I have a special treat for you guys today. Boy, Kayvon's in the house, and we're going to touch base on a lot of things, man. He has a great story. You know, like Biggie said, you know, he has a story to tell. He definitely has a story to tell. He has um, My Purpose, which is a dope clothing line. Um, by the way, Kay, we bought a few. I had my team buy a few items, so... Uh, we definitely gonna yeah man we we just love the story we love the movement we love everything about it and we just wanted you to come in and share your story man please uh, let's give him a warm welcome everybody okay welcome welcome how are you doing today i'm doing good man appreciate you for having me stanley uh it's honor to be on this podcast um and i'm ready to add value man i'm ready to add value where 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 it sees fit so so let's jump in man all right, cool. We're going to do a deep dive because there's so much I want to touch on. So let me give you guys a quick background story. Me and Kayvon was doing a, um, a a webinar, not necessarily a webinar, but it was an entrepreneurship week. And we we were going back and forth, everybody giving their feedback and giving, you know, positive information. And Kayvon just broke it down, his story. And I was just so taken back. I was like, nah, we got to get him on the show. So let's quickly introduce yourself, um, give some more details before we dive in. So that way they can have a, a overall background of what's going on. So what's up, everybody? And it's pronounced Kavon. No worries, though, man. I get Kevin and <laughs> and everything out of time. Right? Uh, so it's Kavon, um, speaker, speaker across the country, CEO of Soul Purpose, a lifestyle brand for people that are really living their purpose, man. And just a purpose, a purpose pusher, man. My my purpose is to inspire beings and people to discover their purpose. Um, and everything that I do is, is in alignment with that. So, uh, so that's how I am, man. And, and forever learning more about myself on a daily and daily basis. That's what's up, man. Listen, I know the the story, a little bit of the story. You came home first of all. You got shot. Um, you were trapped for a little bit. And you got locked up. I guess, the, you know, most people would have went the other way around. Most people would have been deterred. They would have, you know, some people come across some stumbling blocks and then decide, OK, I'm going to give up. I'm going to continue the route that I was on. But you came home and changed the whole entire script. Give us some background on that. Um, you know, I tell people right now that uh, even with everything going on with COVID, that People are getting a micro dose of what it's like to be in jail. Um, I spent a year in jail. I had open cases in four different counties throughout Indiana, uh, all for dealing drugs and firearms. And um, people are getting a micro dose of what it's like to be in jail. Meaning this is that when you're stuck in the confines of your four walls, anything that is out of integrity in your life gets exposed. Meaning that, you know, people are at home questioning right now, what is it that they want to do with their lives? People are, uh, I know CEOs who have climbed the corporate ladders, right? But now they're at home and they feel like they don't even know they're a teenager because they've just been at work all the time, right? Or you're right, in a right. relationship and you chill with the homies and go out on the weekends to get away from it. And now it's like you two are stuck at the house and now that gets exposed, right? So for me, what got exposed was really like, do I know myself and do I know what I'm here to do? You know, I'm seeing people get sentenced to 94 years, 80 years, 30 years. Um, and I'm just like, there has to be more for my life than this. So I started thinking about like, what is my purpose? What is it that I'm, I'm here for, you know? And um, what I knew was, is that being on that path, like I've already came close to death by surviving the gunshot to the head. I had a bullet that went in from one side to the other, right underneath my earlobes on both sides. And when I was 18 years old, I was only in the hospital for like three days. Uh, only in the hospital about three, four days. The only thing that happened was the bullet fractured my jaw. So my mouth was wired shut for about a month and a half, but that was it. Um, so that was a blessing, right? So it's like I've already been on the on the brink of death, 
And now I'm on the brink of throwing my life away in prison. And it's like, if I keep down this path, there's only, it's inevitable what's going to happen. So I just started right. thinking about what is it that I want to do for my life now, man? And um, and getting out, I didn't know what is it that I wanted to do. I didn't know what better was. I just knew that there had to have been better. Um, so I just started going to work on myself, man. Just started reading books, diving into personal development. I was reading a lot of books when I was in jail. And one thing led to the next, man. I started really discovering personal development and the power of your mind and, and all of these things. And I don't know, have you ever uh, heard of The Secret? Yes. Yeah, I watched the documentary when I was 18 years old, right? And it worked. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> I applied it in the streets and it worked. I made a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> but on this side, it's like, I, I know some of these personal development tools. Let me use them in a way that is more productive, man. And I just made that the mission when I came home. Yeah, I'm glad you touched on the secret because, you know, one of the things that they have on there is the, the storyboard, the vision boards and all that stuff. Right. And then, you know, you materialize it in your mind, you envision it and you, you have to vis physically put yourself in there in that position. Right. And what I liked about your story is because you use the story, the storyboard or the, the, the secret itself, the book, and you transcend the whole the whole concept of it and then turn it around and you know when i when i realized that is when you touch on the story when you sold all your sneakers to make the the opportunity happen you want to touch on that yeah so i came home man and i'm on house arrest i got sentenced to three years on house arrest and it's about month uh probably like month 10 and um i'll hear about tony robbins through like a youtube rabbit hole right so I'm just listening. I'm feeding my mind. What people have to understand is that uh, you have to feed your mind. Information changes situations. So in order to get information, you, we only learn in really three different capacities, right? Either you have somebody in your life that is telling you something that you learn. Either you are watching something. So you watch like a documentary or something to learn, or you read something that is learned that you're learning. So if you're not listening to a podcast or reading something, if you have nobody in your life that is putting you on game, and if you're not seeking those things, then how do you expect to learn? So for me, I dive into YouTube of just always constantly feeding my mind with positivity, listening to motivational things, different philosophies. Um, and then I came past Tony Robbins, man, uh, one of the one of the elites in this personal development world, right? Um, went down a YouTube rabbit hole, learned about him, Learned about his program, and I watched this documentary, I'm Not Your Guru, on Netflix, man. I feel like I should be getting paid, bro. I tell so many people, <laughs> oh, I'll probably send a bunch of people this program. Bro. I need to hit Tony up. I need to check, man. <laughs> you definitely plugged them in, right? You plugged them in. Right, right. I'm plugging them, right? I watched I'm Not Your Guru on Netflix, so I, I recommend everybody watching it. And I didn't know what better was, but better looked like in that room. You know, the only problem is to be in that room, you have to be in Florida, and have $5,000 for the cheapest ticket on sale. And I was living in my mom's basement on house arrest, had $100 to my name, had about, what, 17 months left on house arrest, 27 months left on house arrest, um, and, and had $100 to my name. But I had a Jordan shoe collection, man. And in life, man, it's about how bad do you really want something? Like, what ends are you willing to go to to make your dream a success, you know? Right. Uh, so about 50 pair of Jordans, I sold my whole Jordan shoe collection, a 40, 50 pair, uh, bought the ticket for $5,000 to get to Tony Robbins, was still on house arrest, man, it was crazy. I saw like 19 months left when I bought my ticket. And everybody thought I was crazy, right? Like, who is this Tony Robbins guy? What do you mean it's $5,000? My brother like, yo, yo, bro, shoot me a stack. I'll call you every morning to motivate you, right? <laughs> you know? But I had this vision, man. And what I tell people is that that vision that you have for your life, man, God gave that vision to you. God didn't give that vision to your mom, your best friend, uh, your son, your daughter, right? That vision was given to you. And if that vision was given to you, that means you have the power to bring that to fruition, man. So I had right. the vision of going to this conference. I bought the ticket. I petitioned the courts, man. They let me off of house arrest half of my time miraculously, which happened to be two weeks before the conference. Went out to the conference, slept in my car. I didn't have money for a hotel, man. And they completely shifted everything from me. Wow. But you, you, you missed out a point where they had the opportunity to go to New York, what you were willing to do. You were willing to drive up to New York, remember? So, so even before that, okay, so right. So <laughs> I, this is after I'm off the house arrest, right? So I went, I went to Tony Robbins, right? 
And then starting Soul Purpose, to kind of bring it back to Soul Purpose and everything as well, is that after discovering my purpose, now I wanted this for everybody around the world. And I went back home and the clothes that I had in my closet didn't represent who I was at this moment anymore. It was all the clothes that I had from when I was in the streets, Gucci, uh, Ralph Lauren, just all these type of designer brands, but it, that didn't feel like who I was, so I started Soul Purpose. Um, and when I started Soul Purpose, man, I had a vision to really help the thousands and millions of people across the world discover their purpose and actually live in it through my brand. Is that when you see my brand, you signify that that's somebody living in their purpose, right? Mm -hmm. So I had these t-shirts. And uh, again, man, it's about how bad do you really want something. I'm on Instagram. I see an influencer that I want to get connected with, right? And proximity is power. Proximity is power. Proximity is power. Get yourself in a room with the people that you want to talk to. I learned about it in an event that was happening in New York. I had about 500 t-shirts, about $200 to my name, a 2002 PT Cruiser. Proximity is power, man. I wanted to get next to this influencer. Dude. I feel like this is somebody that can help change my life. So I packed up my car, my 2002 PT Cruiser from Indianapolis, drove 12 hours over to New York just to get in the room with this person and take my t-shirts as a way to get money to make it back home. I didn't have enough money to make it home. I slept in my car this whole trip. Went out there, met with the influencer. I, I had proximity in the same event. He learned about my story. He brought me up on stage. Uh, let me tell my story to the audience real quick. It's only about 50 people. Man, I sold a t-shirt to all 50 people, man. Sold a thousand dollars worth of t-shirts. And because of that one event, that ended up being that event that I met somebody. I met a principal that wanted me to speak on his at his school because he saw me speak on stage. Months down the line, I went to a Tony Robbins conference right? The Tony Robbins conference was five days before the speaking engagement. Uh -huh. At the Tony Robbins conference, I met one of the top lawyers in the nation, and he was like, where are you from? And I'm like, Indianapolis. He's like, I'm from New Jersey. I was like, oh, I have to give a speech in New Jersey right after this event. He was like, no way. The same day you have your speech, why don't you come to my annual Christmas party, right? I went out to his Christmas party, Proximity is Power. Nothing but millionaires there. I went out to his his speak uh, his uh, Christmas party, and that's where I met my mentor. And within ten minutes of meeting my mentor, he invited me to come live with New York, and that's eventually how I raised eight hundred thousand dollars for sole purpose and launched my company. But people look at it like uh, that happened because I met my mentor, but no, it happened because I followed my heart and drove out to New York, even when I didn't have enough money to make it out there, and it didn't make sense to anybody else because I had my vision, man. Not only that, but you took a leap of faith. Right. I, I think, think that that's the part that, you know, a lot of us always miss out. That's a step we always miss. Because when you really think about it, right, you have the vision, but you didn't sit on it. Most people sit on things, right? And then when they think like, all right, I'm I'm gonna try it and if it doesn't work out, then you know, that's the excuse right there, number one, because things may not work out. So you can't bet on if it doesn't work out, it, it is what it is, because nine out of ten times it doesn't work out the exact same way that you plan it in your head 100%. Sometimes, yeah sometimes it works out better sometimes it work, works out worse but you're still at least you put in that effort and if you have a plan b you always don't use it you're always going to use it that's always going to be in the back of your mind right it's like having a safety net you know and you, you you're figuring at one point all right i have a safety net if i fall on this i'll be okay but then you don't put a hundred percent into it you don't put a hundred ten percent one right. Reason, man, listen, they say if you want to learn how to swim, I mean, I don't, I'm not telling nobody to do this, but if it's sink or swim, you're going to become a damn good swimmer when it's sink or swim. And Tony Robbins talks about burning the boats, man, is if you want to take the islands, burn the boats. That a general back in the day, they went to an island. He got all his army off of the boats and said, now turn around and burn the boats. And they're like, yo, why are you burning the boats? He was like, because now we don't have a way to go back. It's either yeah. we can't retreat. this island. You can't or retreat. You can't retreat. You can't retreat, man. And when you can't retreat, you perform. And it's like my uh, life put myself in that situation that that causes me to perform. Let me put myself out there. And if I don't give myself a plan B, I'm going to perform, man. Man, I like how you phrase that, man. Because you have to perform. You drop so much gems. And the other thing is that I want to touch on, now that you got the company up and running, you didn't have this knowledge before. So that's another knowledge that you had to obtain right so you took a leap of faith you went out there you put yourself out there proximity is key and then 
now you've got you accomplish one one part of the goal. Now the other part of the goal is to put it out there, put the mater- put the brand out there, and talk about that journey. Um, it's never ending, man. Even the journey I'm going through right now, it's like it's you know it's canine. C A N I constant and never ending improvement, you know, mm. getting started. It's like even on this journey of having a startup company, learning about a board, learning about advisors, learning about uh, having a C Corp, learning about structuring, learning about hiring. I didn't come from a, a, a background of learning these things. I never went to college for this. I never, um, I didn't have, I didn't grow up in this type of environment to be able to know about business or know how to handle it right uh i've just always been this hustler man i tell people even out there people that are in the streets and everything is that the same skill set it takes to run a gang is the same skill set that it will take to run a company so it's like those 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 things that we are kind of always being ashamed for can also be your strongest suit is that if you're willing just to put in that work man and that's all it's been for me is learning and learning on the fly and learning on the job. And that's the best type of experience to me. It's not sitting in a classroom or reading a book, right? But it's really of learning on the job. Because with that learning, it grows exponentially. You you learn how to pivot. You learn how to make things happen. You learn about the power of Google. That is like a lot of the answers that you have, if you Google, it's on Google, right? You learn about these different things. (laughs) Everything, everything you can learn is on Google or YouTube, right? Well, they're the same, yeah. Like Google or Google or YouTube, man, and um, it's just been never ended learning, man. Even just right now, as far as having a company, learning about hiring, learning about marketing, learning about this, I'm going through all that right now, man. You know, I'm going through all that, all those learning lessons that it takes right now. Um, but it's the most beautiful experience ever because it's happening in real time, and this knowledge and everything that I'm having from having a startup company is invaluable. And what I recommend anybody listening to this right now is just to get started. Like, I didn't have none of this figured out when I started my company. I didn't have none of this figured out when I went to talk to investors. Like, it was all a learning process. You learn the things that somebody wants to wants to hear, the things that people don't want to hear. You learn what works with marketing, what people don't work. You find your voice and your brand, right? It's like, just mm. get started. Like, just get started. You can't sit back. The market is going to tell you everything. The people are going to tell you everything, right? And that's one of the biggest things that I learned is like, you know, you sit back and you try to plan, and you try to anticipate what is it that people want to see? What is it that people want to hear? What content they want to see with this and that. And it's like, you spend so much time planning that while you just plan for these 10 days, somebody else has did something every day and tested and learned, tested and learned, tested and learned, right? So mm-hmm. you, you want to find this balance between planning. Planning is definitely necessary. I don't want anybody to ever get that confused. Right. But you learn to find a balance between planning and, be- and between execution. Um, but at the beginning, it's like execution trumps everything. Just get started. Just put your product out there. Just take that first step. Start Googling things, man. And as you get started, you'll start to see Martin Luther King said, you don't have to see the whole staircase. Just take the first step. So it's like just yeah. take that first step. And as you take steps, man, the other steps will become clear. Yeah. I like how you you phrase the fact that, you know, you tweet as you keep going. So you constantly developing the product right you're constantly developing yourself but you're making adjustments as you're going right and because you're never content and that's the key is not being content in what you did yesterday because there's always an improvement as you go on right so the person you were yesterday already passed that day is done right so now you got to focus on the next day oh you got to focus on today and tomorrow so i like how you said that good it's good to prepare and have preparation but it's another thing to make tweaks as you're going along and iteration is a, a wonderful thing but hey man i i there's another thing i want to touch on right because now you now we're putting the pieces together right right so we know how it started right and we know how it's going right now we want to see what is your ultimate vision like where is it that you're trying to go or who you're trying to become Man, uh, I want to leave a legacy that uh, my legacy impacted a billion people to discover their purpose in this world. 
it's like I'm, I'm, I'm working towards a goal that's way bigger than myself and a goal that I know that I will never see accomplished in my lifetime. But it's a goal that it's like you, you do the work to know that this legacy that you leave will make that impact. You know what I mean? It's like even Martin Luther King, he had this vision. He said, I know that I won't be the one, I won't live the day to see where this dream I had come alive. But that's what greatness is about. It's about putting in that work, knowing that it's going to affect generations and generations to come way beyond what you can see physically right now. Um, so it's like, that's the legacy, man. I'm going to leave a legacy that could inspire being people to discover their purpose, right? So purpose, a billion, multi-billion dollar brand, uh, entrepreneurship schools around this world, teaching about personal development, teaching about credit, teaching about uh, all these aspects of life that is so necessary that we don't learn about stocks, just all these other things, right? Um, and really just leaving a legacy that can empower men and having a foundation that can change the world. Um, everything that I do is geared towards inspiring the billion people to discover their purpose. That's my North Star. That's when I type it in my GPS, that's the, the destination, you know, that that guy is now the car may look different today. Right now, the car looks like speaking on stage and so purpose. Right. But in five years, the car may look different. It may be running the foundation. It may be having another company. It may be starting schools. But just know that my wheels are always turning towards inspiring a billion people to discover what their purpose is, man. And I feel like a world of purpose is a world with less anger, uh, less uh, resentment, less uh, racism, right? And just more compassion, more gratitude, more fulfillment, more peace within ourselves and being able to help each other out, man. Um, so that's what I work towards, man. And that's my North Star is to inspire a billion people to discover what their purpose is. Man, that was amazing. That was amazing. I like that. But... That North Star is internally, though, and it, and it requires discipline. Yeah, it's internally, and it requires discipline. But the other thing that we touched on uh, before is how you start your day in your operation. And one of the things that you shared with me last time was you start with gratitude, and that's how you get your people motivated. You want to touch on that? Yeah, man. So to me, along this journey, man, gratitude is so important. Um it's so important because you're going to experience so many emotions along your journey of life, just not even just through entrepreneurship, from anxiety to anger to frustration to resentment. And gratitude can't live in the same space as anger or frustration. You can't be grateful and angry at the same time or grateful and frustrated at the same time. They can't mm -hmm. exist in the same space. So for me, the best way to set the space every day within the company is that we come in and we each say, what is it that we're grateful for? Every single day, every single day. I don't care how many ideas we've had over the night or it's like, yo, bro, this happened or whatever. Every day, the first thing, and it may be like, you know, uh, my operations got Evan. I may come and be like, yo, Evan, like, what? he's like, yo, bro, what are you grateful for? Like it's not mm. to develop it to where it's not even something that you're doing, but it's something that the culture accepts and it becomes us. Cause it's not about Kavan looking to tell people what they're grateful for. Because if they're just saying it because Kavan is acting, then it's not um it's not something that is authentic to them. They're only doing it because they're going through the motions. Right. But if you feel the gratitude, then saying it is not important. It's the feeling of it that's the most important, you know? Yeah, and and the acting on it, you gotta act on it. Exactly, you know. So the first thing we do, we come in and we say what we're grateful for, man. And that allows us to really get centered. It allows us to create a space of gratitude, of of peace in the midst of chaos, right? Because there's chaos going on, right? You have to be at be in peace with it to be able to think yeah, clearly, man. Um, and it allows me just to really be able to develop a connection, even with uh, my operations guy, with investors with advisors, whatever it is, every conversation is always starting a conversation off of gratitude, man. Listen, you seem to have this key sense of awareness. Where does that come from? I think it's the number one, you just pointed out something amazing, man. Cause to me, that's the number one most important quality that somebody could have is awareness. I agree, I agree. Nothing that you're not aware of. You can't change it if you're not aware of it. So awareness is the first step. It's not about discipline. 
Because if you're not aware that you're not being disciplined, you're not going to change it. So awareness is the is the context into which all these other characteristics fall in, right? Um, so for me, the real awareness, it comes from just canine, bro. Constant and never ending improvement is that I'm always looking for ways to develop. I'm always looking for ways that I could be better, you know? Um, and a part of it is having the awareness to know when I'm the leader and also having this awareness to know when I need to be led, you know? And mm -hmm. when I can take a step back and let somebody else drive. And when I can take a step back and let somebody else point out where I could be a better leader. You know, I always even ask my my team, it's like, where where is it that I can be better? How can I be a better leader? How can I be a better communicator to you, right? How can I be uh, better? Um, how can you receive things better from me? Which, which way do you want me to be able to talk to you that you understand and you resonate with it, right? It's just having that awareness, man, because once you're aware of things, you could change. Um, but it, it starts with that. That's the number one thing to me. That touch home, like, because a lot of us don't like to look in within and we, you have to look in within and say, all okay, right, where's my weakness and where's my strengths? And then how can I improve and what do I need to develop on? And you touched it uh, dead on because you have to have a target, right? But not only that, you can't see from the outside when other people can point out your, your mistakes or they can point, not necessarily mistakes, but they could point out, areas of improvement, areas of opportunities where you can improve. I think that's key. But here's the thing about what you just said. It requires trust, right? And it seems like your team trusts each other enough to share that. That means it's a safe space. Yeah. And that you created that. You know, the thing about awareness, man, is that uh, people run from wherever kind of their truth is. This is why I tell people mm. that when it's about you, it becomes so personal that you don't want to deal with whatever is there. But when it's not you, if you just took your life and put it on a piece of paper and said that this person is this way, they do this, they're strong in this, their weaknesses is in this, and you just access that person, then you can easily see like this person on this piece of paper, Stanley. But Stanley, it's not me, it's like not Kavan, just Kavan on this piece of paper. Kavan needs to be more disciplined in this capacity. Right. Kavan needs to read more. So it's like people run from whatever their truth is instead of just accepting that this is who I am, this is where I'm strong at, and these are the areas that I could be better. So I seek where can I be better because that's where growth happens. If I'm just constantly improving on what I'm great at, which is amazing. That's your gift. You're supposed to refine your gift and improve on what you're great at as well. You know, but it's like, I don't shy away from the areas that I'm not good at. And there's some areas that I'm not good at and I'm, I'm okay with not being good at that. Like, I don't even, I don't even look to improve that. I can hire somebody. True. But you got to recognize that too. Exactly. But there's some areas where it's like, I'm not good at, but I know I want to be like, I know right now that I want to work out more than when I'm working out. And like, that's just a fact. Like, Right now, I want to at least be working out three to five times a week. Right now, I'm on I'm that boat with you, brother. I'm on that boat. You know, what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm just gonna sit there and I'm just telling, like, come on, you're not being disciplined working out, and let me go to work on fixing that or add right. accountability in my life for that. But it's not shying away from the areas that I know I could be better, man. It's just and it's having that awareness uh, to be okay with that and and to look for for those areas that you could be better. Yeah. When it comes to the working out, that's one of the, and I'm, I'm glad you touched on that because this is where I'm, I'm seldomly vulnerable, but I'm going to share this. When it comes to working out, um, for me, I'll have a consistent run. And then the moment I stop, that's it. I have a consistent run of stopping, stopping too. <laughs> I spent them, Kavan, no breaks. Kavan takes a mile every time oh. I get a pinch. I'll be like, wait, I'm, I'm on it. Four o'clock in the morning, I'm going and the moment I stop, I take a week off or even a couple of days off. That's it. It's over. It's, it's over. over. Yeah, it's over. Then I got to reprogram my mind and I got to go start the whole process all over again. And I'm like, damn, I just put in all that work and I just lost it. And I just like that. The moment I take one, two days off, the moment I give myself that inch, then I'm going to take a mile. So like, even for me, it's like, okay, come on. If I know I can't give myself an inch, then I'm working out seven days a week. 
But the seven days, it may not be working. It may just be going to just walk on a treadmill just for an hour. So it's still my body resting, but mm -hmm. mentally I'm putting myself in the, I'm putting myself in that space. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I don't care if I just go down to the gym and just stretch for, for 30 minutes. It's like mentally I'm here at the gym seven days a week. Because I know the moment that I give myself a day or two, I'm, on, I'm not coming back. Like, holler at me in three months. You know what I mean? <laughs> 1,000. <laughs> I don't care if I have to walk around the block. That's still letting my body rest. But it's like I'm putting myself in that space that no matter what, I'm up at X amount of time doing X amount of workout. I don't care if I'm walking, stretching, jogging, pumping iron. It's like, because if not, you holler at me. I'll yeah. <laughs> No, I agree. Mayweather said something that was key. May Mayweather said uh, he, when he goes to the gym, not every day he, he puts in 100%, right? Some days he has some, some of those days where, you know, he's not 100. But he puts in the 100% to make sure he makes it there. And he starts some kind of workout. Even if it's something small, but he made it. So it's basically training your mind. I forgot who said this. It was the, one of the um, one of the he well, he's not an athlete. He was in the military, and after he he wrote a book and he had an audio book, but he said he was building calluses in, in his mind. Yes, yes, I'm building calluses in my mind. So every every time I don't want to do something, I force myself to do it. So that way, I'm programming my mind and building calluses in my mind to make sure I do it. When I when I grasp that concept. And I internalized it. Then I realized the biggest effort is making it there. Yeah. Right? So when you're working out, the biggest effort is getting out the door. It's getting up in the morning. That's the biggest effort. You know, once you're out there, your mind said, okay, you made it out there. So if you're going to, man, you, oh, man. And then once that's done, that that's your biggest hurdle because once you're out there it's like i'm already out here i might as well just go this is what we're doing that's, that's your mind it's like we here now so obviously this is what we're doing so let's just do it but it's about getting there man and it's the same thing with business man it's about just getting started it's like once you tell yourself that this is what we're doing i'm getting started i'm about to try to make this happen rain sweet or snow then then your mind it gears for that it's like are right, he's serious like he's serious so like let's let's do it man like you just said, it's just getting started is the biggest hurdle. Once you get started, then you'll start going. Man, I know this. I know you, we crunched this in to make this happen. And I'm so grateful because I knew this was going to be special um, from the moment we, we had that conversation. And I just wanted to share that story and this amazing journey that you're on and this great path that you're going to leave you're going to leave behind so that somebody else could walk through it. Um you basically open up doors for the next person that decides to say, "You know what? I don't want to do this anymore. I want to go down this journey." And you lay down the groundwork so the path is already there. Only thing they have to do is just put their seat on their feet in the sand and just continually continue to walk there. And then from there they'll eventually get their own path and and create something. But I like what you're doing. We are very supportive of it. Um, we, we, I can't wait till the shirts come in, uh, the team and I, we bought a few, we're going to, you know, write down our purpose on, on the shirt and then just have a good time with it, man. And yeah. So, but thank you. Anything you want to leave to share with anybody, uh, some information, some, something that's encouragement to others, anything. The last thing, man, is that anybody listening to this is that, uh, I'm no better than anybody out there, man. I'm um, just a kid from Indianapolis that discovered my purpose, had a vision, and I followed it. And there's nothing that I've done that nobody else can do. You know, just discover what that is for yourself. If you don't know it, check out soulpurpose.com, S-O-L-E, purpose.com. Find me, Kavon Massenberg, on social media. Um, I'm always helping people discover their purpose. We have plenty of tools that can help somebody discover that for themselves. If there's somebody out there listening that is in this space that don't know what that is for themselves, but... Once you discover that, man, that's the magic in life. And again, um, I'm just somebody that did it, man, and you could do it too. So find me on Soul, uh, again, Kavon Massenberg on Instagram. Official Soul Purpose is the brand. Soulpurpose.com. Grab some merch, live in your purpose, man. And I look forward to seeing the, the difference we can make in this world together. I like, I like that. that. 
Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. For everybody, I told you it was going to be special, man. I, I said it. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Good night. <laughs>